Crusoe has been developed and brought through uh, by the collaboration between um, Lee McGrain, Openfield and Warburton's and is supported by a contract between Openfield and Warburton's which will deliver a minimum premium and a, uh, a lower specification in the marketplace. Crusoe has proven itself to be a reliable variety. It's yielded well and better than some of its competitors and this has given growers the confidence to grow it, I believe, going forward. Well, this is the, one of the first commercial crops of Crusoe. Um, this is grown at Andrew Owensworth's farm at Fullback in Lincolnshire, about five miles away uh, from the Cereals 2012 site. Uh, we were back here in May uh, when the crop was very green and at the time talking about what effect the drought had had on the crop. Of course, since then, it's never stopped raining. And in addition, we've had the highest disease pressure that we've seen for many years, uh, from yellow rust through to brown rust, Septoria triticae, and latterly, of course, Fusarium, which has had a huge effect on many wheat crops across the United Kingdom. Early reports on Crusoe and Edgar, and particularly yield and quality, have been very encouraging. The farm yields seem to be above the level of all of the other milling, group one milling wheat varieties, generally speaking, and the quality seems to be holding up particularly well. Um, high levels of protein, which I think we are seeing across the Group 1 varieties generally anyway because of lower yields, um, but really most importantly, a good level of specific weight uh, in a season where specific weights were badly suppressed due to the very cloudy, dull conditions that we saw through the summer. So the quality is held up and yield certainly both on farm and in official trials is at or above the long term mean. I think it's important not to take one year in isolation when looking at varieties and how they've performed in yield trials, but I do think that we have to recognise that some varieties have succumbed uh, disastrously um, to certain diseases and I think it's really important for farmers to look at those ratings, understand the meaning of those ratings and what that will mean in terms of variety choice and how they diversify the risk on their farm. Over the last five years we've seen a a steady shift towards the growing of high yielding feed wheat, growing for the heap. Now this year has been quite an interesting year because yields have been generally low across the board and indeed some of those high potential wheat really haven't delivered either in terms of yield or particularly bushel weights. Varieties like Crusoe have held their own, they've performed very similar in terms of yield performance to the long term average for the variety and the D bushel weights are good and protein levels are very high. So it might encourage more growers to consider growing bread making wheats going forward. The bread making market is a key market for many farmers and we need constant innovation. We need to look at new varieties all of the time. The varieties that we've had historically, Solstice, Gallant and Cordial have proven their worth but they're becoming outclassed as time goes by and we need varieties like Crusoe to bring that level of innovation both in terms of quality but as we've seen this year in terms of disease resistance. Results are now coming in for varieties uh, acro across the board and we're seeing quite varied results. This is the first year we've uh, had uh, commercial results back from Crusoe and the results so far are looking very very positive. We've got good bushel weights compared with many other varieties. We've got excellent hagbergs which have been maintained despite the weather and protein levels are really at an unprecedented level. So it's looking very good for Crusoe uh, in its first year of a commercial launch. I'm Andrew Owensworth uh, from Fullbeck Farms. We're here today uh, harvesting the first crop of, of Crusoe wheat. Uh, it's the first wheat after oilseed rape. We've got some uh, second wheat Crusoe yet to cut. But at the moment we're having good results. The bushel weights are a little bit on the, on the lighter side as 72 or 3, but for this year compared to other varieties that we've grown, it's very good. The yields from the uh, Crusoe, this time this is taken into account this first, first wheat Crusoe after oil seed rape, uh, this is about 9 tonnes per hectare. It came well in the autumn and throughout the spring we had a good look at it with open field and lima grain during the growing season and it's come on as an, a good even crop. It's had some very adverse weather but on the other hand it's had a, a quite uh, robust fungicide strategy on it including a T4. I, I used to grow Heriwood, uh, we've finished growing Heriwood altogether now, I can't see it being reintroduced onto the farm 
the main benefit of introducing Crusoe is by yield. Uh, it out yields everywhere it's far in a par or in excess of uh, solstice uh, as well. Um, let's hope it's the new variety for the future really. A very important part of the support package to growers is uh, the husbandry guidelines that Lee have produced for over 10 years. Um, this is done from agronomy work that's carried out at our breeding station in Woolpit by our breeders um, and it offers a much more in-depth guide to growers uh, in terms of helping them to manage the crop. It's not a blueprint, it's there to guide and to assist them in terms of realising the full genetic potential of the variety. Um, so this Crusoe husbandry guide is available. Um, if you go onto the website at www.lemagrain.co.uk and we'll be very happy to send you a copy.